Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an algebraic expression. So we're given that x plus 1 over x is equal to square root of 3, and we're supposed to evaluate x to the 50th power plus 1 over x to the 50th power. So this is a pretty large power of x that we need to evaluate, and I'll be presenting two methods, and I could probably talk about a third one. But anyways, let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and solve for x. Let's see. If we go ahead and multiply everything by x, we get x squared plus 1 equals square root of 3x. Let's put everything on the same side. And then solve for x. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 3 in this case, right? minus 4ac, which is 4. Awesome. And that's divided by 2. Wow. This equation doesn't have a real solution, which shouldn't be a surprise, because square root of 3 is actually going to give us uh, something greater than... Anyways, let's just solve it. Okay, what am I talking about? So 3 minus 4 is negative 1, so this is going to give us square root of 3 plus minus i over 2. So I'm getting two values of x here. Let's just use one of them. How about root 3 plus i over 2? Let's go ahead and plug this in. Now, what am I supposed to evaluate, right? x to the 50th power. Now, here's the challenge. If you raise this to the 50th power, root 3 plus i over 2 to the 50th power, which is x to the 50th, and by, this, by, this, uh, by the way, you're going to run into some difficulties. First of all, you're going to have 51 terms using the binomial theorem. So there must be an easier way to do it, don't you think? And there is. So let's go ahead and write this as follows. Root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i to the power 50. And guess what? We're going to use complex numbers. Yes, because this is the cosine of an angle. That should be familiar to you, hopefully. This is cosine alpha, and this is sine alpha. And this angle is in the first quadrant. The cosine of which angle in the first quadrant is root 3 over 2. And if you said 30 degrees, you're right about that. You could also call it pi over 6. So alpha is pi over 6, not because of cosine only, but sine also. Okay, that determines the coordinate system or the quadrant. Okay, so alpha is equal to pi over 6, which means we can write our number x or this number, root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i, let's call it, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I can call it z or x, same thing. But suppose x is a complex number. And now we can go ahead and write it as follows. First of all, look at the absolute value of x, which is also called the modulus or the r. This is going to be root 3 over 2 squared, 3 over 4 plus 1 over 4. And underneath the radical, that's going to be 1, OK? So that's going to be multiplied by 1 and then multiply by e to the power. So what's the general form? r times e to the power i theta. r is 1, so we don't even have to worry about it. Let's just write e to the power i times pi over 6. That's my number, and I'm going to raise it to the 50th power and find x to the 50th power. Easy. Look, how do you do that? If x is equal to this, then I can basically go ahead and raise both sides to the 50th power by using the Moivre's formula, the MOA. I can never say that word. Okay, so raise both sides to the 50th power, and you're going to get e to the power i 50 pi over 6. And 50 pi over 6 actually can be simplified. We can write it as 25 pi over 3. Let's go ahead and simplify it. 50 pi over 6 is 25 pi over 3. And that's actually 24 pi plus pi over 3. And that is going to be 8 pi plus pi over 3. Now notice that 8 pi is just going to give you 0, right, on the unit circle. So we only have to consider pi over 3 for looking at the principal value, of course. And this is going to turn into e to the power i pi over 3. Now what happened? I just raised it to the 50th power. It was just similar to 
squaring it because it was pi over 6 now it became pi over 3 right okay great so now this is my number x to the 50th is e to the power i pi over 3 but I can also write it as cosine of pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3 now what is cosine 60 degrees that's 1 half and this is root 3 over 2 multiplied by i that's my x to the 50th power but I gotta add it to its reciprocal. So how do you do that? How do you find the reciprocal of a complex number? Actually, in this case, if you have a plus bi, its reciprocal is just going to be, let's find out, you gotta multiply by the conjugate, a minus bi and a minus bi. So you're gonna get the conjugate in the numerator, and at the bottom you're gonna get modulus squared. But this number has a modulus of one, which is the same as x, because when you raise it to the 50th, modulus is raised to the 50th, which is going to be 1 again. So it's just going to be the conjugate. In other words, if x to the 50th is this number, its reciprocal is going to be its conjugate, complex conjugate. When you add them, you're going to get something super duper simple. Let's see. If you add 1 half plus root 3 over 2i and 1 half minus root 3 over 2i, root 3 over 2i is going to cancel out, 1 half plus 1 half is going to be 1. So the answer is 1. I know hard to believe, but that's the answer. Okay, that is the first method. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So the first method basically use solving the quadratic for a solution, picking up one of the solutions, and then raising it to the 50th power, but turning this into a complex number in polar form. It is a complex number, we just turned it into polar form, which is this and then raise it to the 50th power, which was super duper easy. That's what's so powerful about complex numbers and their powers. Great, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the second method. And obviously, I do want to generalize this, so we can go ahead and uh, also consider a third approach for this problem. But let's go ahead and settle with uh, the second method first. Okay, so we're going to get, let me write the original problem, and now we're supposed to evaluate this sum of 50th powers. Now here's what I'm thinking. If I can generalize this, that would be great. And how this, this is how I can generalize it. Root 3 is not a random number. It is actually 2 times the cosine of an angle, right? It is 2 cosine, what? What is cosine 30, which is pi over 6, right? Awesome. So now, to generalize this, I can do the following. And I believe I made a video on this before. I can also link down here and in the comments. Anyways. If I have this equation, I can write it as follows. x squared plus 1 is equal to 2x cosine alpha. And then I can bring everything to the same side. And then I can solve this use with the quadratic formula. And from here, I'm going to get the following. x equals negative b, which is 2x cosine alpha. I mean 2 cosine alpha. x is not included. 2 cosine alpha. Oh, that's not. Oh, I didn't even know that was a pen or a pencil, whatever. Anyways, 2 cosine alpha plus minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be 4 cosine squared alpha, minus 4ac, which is going to be 4. So here's what happened, let me tell you. 4 times cosine squared minus 1 becomes negative 4 sine squared under the radical. And then you get something that is complex from here. 2 cosine alpha plus minus 2 sine alpha multiplied by i. And when you divide by 2, you get cosine alpha plus minus i sine alpha, and then you can use the same formula. A third method could probably be just solve for x, but not in that way. We can kind of write it as follows. We can kind of write it like this, and then x squared plus 1 is root 3x, and then I can isolate x squared and evaluate the third power, the fourth power, and then the fifth power until I get a pattern. And guess what? Since our angle was pi over 6, you'll get a nice number at the 6th power. And then you can just go to the 50th from there. And here's the solution from Wolfram Alpha. I didn't know, even know how I had it, but that's what you get for the solutions. We just talked about it. And I don't know if there's a graph. I don't think so, but that's pretty much it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.